Imagine getting arrested for having a child with a dead body. Jennifer Burroughs is a 26 year old who was working at a morgue when she was arrested after a DNA test proved her child's father was a dead body she was supposed to autopsy. But it actually gets worse from here because while Jennifer was working as an assistant pathologist at the morgue, she had relations with more than 60 bodies belonging to men aged 17 to 71 years old. She did this for two years until it led to the birth of her son. Her son's father was a 57 year old veterinarian from Texas who passed away in a car accident in 2017. Jennifer was charged with 158 counts of indecent treatment of a corpse. Many psychologists and experts have debated why someone would do this. The reasons range from curiosity to severe mental illness. Some even believe Jennifer was suffering from psychosis. Alright, after all that, I don't really know how to end this video, so stay safe out there and follow for more. Social media influencer Andrew Tate has reportedly been arrested in Romania. It is being reported that today both him and his brother were arrested in relation to human trafficking. This report is coming out after a video is shown of both Andrew Tate and his brother being escorted by armed guards. It is right now believed that Romanian officials were able to identify that he was in the country because of a response to a tweet. Environmental activist Greta Thunberg posted this yesterday responding to Andrew Tate tagging her and talking about his very bad for the economy cars. Greta responded saying, yes, please do enlighten me. Email me at a very hilarious email address. Andrew Tate then responded with a two minute video of him making fun of the use of pronouns and calling her names. In the video, he asked someone off screen to hand him two boxes of pizza to try to taunt her by, you know, saying, I'm not going to recycle these. And there was Romanian type on the sides, potentially letting officials know that he was in the country. So we don't know officially what he's being charged with or what exactly is going on, but yeah. So what happened to Tracy Edwards after the Dahmer trial? I'm sure most of you true crimers know who Tracy Edwards is by now. But for those of you who don't, Tracy Edwards was one of Dahmer's last victims. He survived. He ended up getting outside of the apartment and alerting the police and ultimately took them back to Dahmer's place and led to Dahmer's arrest. So after the trial, Tracy moved back to Wisconsin. He ended up getting into some crime. He was arrested for things like drug possession, theft, property damage, and failure to pay child support. Then in July of 2011, Tracy was actually accused of throwing a homeless man off of a bridge in Milwaukee. Tracy was 52 years of age at that time, and he was currently homeless himself. In that case, he ended up pleading guilty to a lesser charge of aiding a felon. Tracy spent a year and a half in prison, and then after that, his whereabouts are unknown. Do you remember that couple that adopted an adult pretending to be a child? Well, there's a recent update. If you don't remember this story, the Barnetts were a family who already had kids and were looking to adopt. An adoption agency they'd never heard of called Christine and Michael Barnett out of the blue to tell them about Natalia Grace. This foster child had recently become available and was supposedly six years old and from Ukraine. Her adoptive parents now say that American doctors told them Natalia Grace is a sociopath and a scammer. At her first bath time, her parents were horrified to find that the six-year-old had a full bush. Christine also claimed that Natalia would menstruate and had no interest in children's toys. And on top of that, she was violent. They say she once poured bleach in her adoptive mom's coffee and tried to push her into an electric fence. They would also wake up in the middle of the night with Natalia standing over them. She would also threaten to stab them with knives and these threats are corroborated by the Barnett's friends. And her previous foster family that gave her up said it was because she tried to hurt one of their children. The only records Natalia had to verify that she was a child was her Ukrainian birth certificate and a single doctor's report. And the Barnett's claimed that a bone density test showed that Natalia was at least 14. And Natalia confessed to pretending to be younger than she really was during a stay at a psychiatric unit. And I would love to see these medical records, but due to HIPAA, they're sealed. In 2012, the Barnett's changed Natalia's birth year from 2003 to 1989, changing her from an 8-year-old girl to a 22-year-old woman. They also rented her an apartment to stay in by herself, and a few months later, the Barnett family moved to Canada, leaving 8-22-year-old Natalia behind. 
Natalia lived off food stamps for a year before going to the police. And that's when the Barnetts were arrested and charged with neglect. Natalia's done Dr. Phil episodes and she said that living alone was really difficult because being a little child, she didn't know how to cook or count money. And this made people sus because if she was a little child, how would she be able to survive alone for a whole year? It should be noted that Natalia now lives with a new foster family that says she's not lying about her age. Reporters located her birth mom back in Ukraine who said in 2019, Natalia was 16, which still meant that Natalia was cutting her age in half when she was telling people that she was eight. Like I said, the Barnetts were arrested and charged, but last year, Michael Barnett was acquitted by a jury after just two hours of deliberation. And Christine had her charges dismissed. And you may be asking, isn't this a plot of a movie? And yes, the 2009 horror film Orphan is about a family that adopts a Russian woman pretending to be a child. And Natalia came into the Barnett's lives just a year after. So maybe Natalia or the Barnett's watched it and got inspired. Investigation Discovery is coming out with a mini series on this and I will definitely be watching and let me know if you want me to talk about this more on my account. Hi friends, this is the case of Rachel Ramkisun. She was 16 years old. She was a student of the Northeastern College. In January 2017, she woke up late as she was studying for her exams and ran to get a car, but never arrived to school. She was found in bushes in Talparo by a hunter. Her autopsy showed she died as a result of asphyxiation due to manual strangulation. Her killer used a thin cord around her neck. No one was arrested in connection with her murder, but her family remains hopeful. The terrifying munchkin scene, and yes, I will be showing the video. Hi, my name is Ethan, and here's everything you need to know in under one minute. It is believed that an actor who played as a munchkin can be seen hanging themselves during the scene known as Tin Woodsman's sequence. The director of the movie quickly debunked the claim, saying that it was just a shadow that happened to show up as the cast was moving. What is interesting was when The Wizard of Oz was re-released in 1989 for its 50th anniversary, the confusing footage had been cleaned up. The birds appeared in a different place and there's no swinging shadow, but here's the clip. Because of the wonderful things you've done, we're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. Let me know, real or fake? I totally understand if you guys are having a hard time sleeping after this video, so I encourage you to get the melatonin diffuser from Cloudy, and it will help you fall asleep in minutes. So breaking news out of Oklahoma, they just released the body cam footage of resting a 12 year old for stabbing her 9 year old brother to death. In this video, she's constantly apologizing. But take a look and let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. I'm sorry! I'm Come so here. sorry! Come here. Come here. I'm so sorry! I'm so sorry! We're just gonna put handcuffs on just for now. I'm sorry, just gonna pull it up here. Where's the knife? Sorry, Dad! I'm sorry! I don't know what's chat! I'm so Sorry, please. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. You better pray to God. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. How old are you? I'm 12 years old. Where's the knife? I was upstairs in my room and I threw it out the window. And you see behind the apartment right here. You threw it where? I threw it out my window upstairs. Right not up not right there. It's the room. It's the other room. It's right behind the apartment. This apartment right here. So where would the knife be? On that side? Behind, right behind. Is yeah. the knife? Okay. I'm so fucking <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Mama. I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. It's something manic shit. What's your, I'm hey, so sorry. What's your mom's name? What? What's your mom's name? I gotta go with him. I'm so sorry. I don't know what the f*** happened. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. Come over here so we're out of the paramedics way. I don't know what happened. I'm so sorry. Hey, what's your name? The seat for me. Sit crisscross on the grass, okay? Okay. Just sit there for a second. You don't have the knife on you, right? No, I swear I don't. I'm sorry. sorry. I don't. I don't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. Okay, this appears to be one of the weirdest true crime stories 
in history. And it's one that totally flew under the radar, at least in the United States, because of when it happened and where it happened. Back in early 2017, two separate women in two separate countries were both approached by men saying they wanted to film a series of prank videos for YouTube. One was from Vietnam, one was from Indonesia. They were paid a small amount of money for this, although it wasn't a small amount of money to them. The prank was that they would run up to strangers in public places and smear some sort of lotion or baby oil or something on their faces and then apologize and run away or kiss them on the cheek and run away. And that was the prank. And they did this over and over and over again, getting specific direction from the guys who hired them on how to dress, on exactly where to smear the cream, that kind of thing. They did it. They got paid. Everything seemed fine. They assumed these videos were going up somewhere. In February of 2017, each of the women were told, hey, we're going to bring in a partner. The two of you are going to work together on this one. It's a Kuala Lumpur airport in Malaysia. They were told exactly how to dress. One of them was told to wear a white t-shirt with the letters LOL on it. You know, like maybe that was branding for the prank channel or something. They were shown the target. They ran up. They smeared the stuff on his face. And then he died. This time, the baby oil had been replaced by the deadly nerve agent VX. The prank victim was Kim Jong-nam, the half-brother of Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. The two women were apparently unknowingly carrying out an assassination on behalf of the regime. See, Kim Jong-nam had been working with the CIA, apparently, and had been exiled from North Korea since 2003. They had apparently tried to take him out multiple times and finally succeeded by convincing two young women they were acting in a prank YouTube video. This girl was murdered by her ex-boyfriend after police fined her for wasting their time when she reported him for stalking her. This case actually makes my blood boil. Shana Grice was a British teenager who met Michael Lane in 2015 when they both worked at Brighton at Fire Alarms. They began a relationship, but Michael became obsessed with her. When she broke up with him, he refused to accept this and chillingly told his friend she'll pay for what she's done. Shana had got back with an ex-boyfriend, Ashley Cook, but refusing to accept this, Michael put a tracker on her car to monitor her movements. On the 8th of February, 2016, Shana received unwanted flowers from Michael and also noticed damage to her vehicle. Frightened, she rang the police for help. In March, Michael snatched her phone and grabbed her hair in an altercation between the two. He was arrested on suspicion of assault, but later released. Infuriatingly, Shana was given a £90 fine from police. They said she had wasted their time because she didn't disclose that she had previously been in a relationship with him. In July the same year, Michael stole a key to her house and let himself in. Disturbingly, he watched her while he thought she was sleeping. Shana was actually awake and was hiding under her duvet after hearing a man breathing in her room. When she heard him leave, she looked out of the window and saw him walking away. He was arrested for theft and told to stay away from her. However, this obviously did not deter him. The next day, Shana got seven calls from a blocked number and when she answered the phone, she heard heavy breathing. However, police told her there were no further lines of inquiry. On the 12th of July, she rang police as she was being followed by Michael. They claimed that the incident was low risk and they did nothing. On the 4th of August, she saw Michael hanging around outside her house. By this point, she was too worried to ring police as they obviously weren't taking her seriously and had given her a fine. 21 days later, Michael let himself into Shana's house when she was home alone. Shockingly, he slit her throat and then set fire to her bedroom while she was in it. He was arrested that day, but he claimed that he walked into her house, found her body, panicked and ran off. He was eventually sentenced to 25 years in prison. Shana's parents said that their daughter would still be alive if Sussex police had acted on their complaints, which I totally agree with.
On July 18, 2019, a 35-year-old man named Sun was doing a live stream out of his apartment in the city of Hefei, which is in China. He was a pretty popular live streamer. He had 15,000 followers. And the way he would get these followers is he had this wheel that had segments on it set up in his living room. And he would spin this wheel. And in each section, there was something edible. So whatever it would land on, he would eat or drink. Now, most of the items were pretty simple, like different types of alcohol or things like eggs or vinegar. But some of the things were a little bit more crazy, like live bugs or even live small animals like geckos. So on this evening, it was sometime after 8 p.m. He's been going for a little while. He's had quite a bit to drink at this point, and you can tell he's intoxicated. When he spins the wheel for the final time and it lands on a new item he has just acquired, which is a centipede. So the type of centipede specifically is unknown. However, it was probably a Chinese red-headed centipede, which are about five to eight inches long, typically as adults. So he goes to eat the centipede, but with all the small animals and bugs that he eats, he doesn't chew them. He always attempts to swallow them whole. And that's what he does with this centipede. So he dangles it up above and drops it down into his throat and goes to swallow it when all of a sudden he's clutching at his throat, freaking out. Now, swallowing a centipede is a really bad idea for several reasons. One of which is because they typically, this type of centipede, have 42 to 46 legs that are pretty sharp that they use to crawl up and cling on to things. The back two legs have these spurs on them that they use for defense that they can jab you with. And just behind their mouths, they have these two huge fang-like structures called forcipules. And what they use those for is to jab, stab into their prey or any animal that's attacking them. And they inject venom with those. Yes, they're venomous. Now, I don't know if Sun knew this or not, but whether he did or didn't, I mean, he really went for it. But... Obviously, we can't see in his throat, but we know from the investigation and from this video, seeing his reaction, we know what happened. The centipede got in his throat. It got lodged in there. It was clawing at the inside of his throat, presumably trying to crawl out with all those nasty little legs, probably stabbing him with the back legs. And we know for a fact it was definitely stabbing the inside of his throat with its forcipules, injecting a bunch of venom into him. Eventually, his airway just swelled up and he would collapse in front of all these people, presumably thousands of people watching. Amazingly and somewhat sadly, nobody alerted authorities. They let the live stream go for two days until his girlfriend showed up and found him dead on his living room floor. The kids in this video look like a happy family filming a TikTok. One of the girls is adopted and what she does to her siblings will make you feel sick. This case has been compared to the movie Orphan. So on the 10th of December 2021, this father from the Philippines, his name is Cruz, he gets the type of phone call no parent ever wants to receive. At exactly 3pm, police inform him that three intruders have entered his house and taken the lives of his two biological children. 18 year old Gwen this girl, and 16-year-old Lewis. The pair had been brutally attacked by a baseball bat and hammer. Now, surviving the incident was their 16-year-old daughter named Janice. As you saw from the beginning, Janice was close to her sibling, often seen having fun, dancing, and laughing with them. So it was understandable that she was distraught. When police asked her what happened, she told them that three intruders entered the house. She was lucky enough to escape because she ran to her bedroom, but her other two siblings were just not fast enough. Now, Janice had only been taken in by this family five months earlier. She had formed a close friendship with Gwen and begged her parents to take Janice in. She told her parents that Janice was an orphan who came from a really tough background. And despite the family having limited resources, they agreed. And Janice joined the family. She was welcomed in and all seemed well on the surface. Now, this attack completely devastated the family. As investigators looked into the case, they noticed something very troubling. Nothing in the family home had been stolen and the weapons used against the two victims were actually owned by the family. In fact, the baseball bat had been stored in Janice's room, which means the thieves would have had to have entered the room. Police also found a bag of clothes belonging to Janice at the back of the house. Those clothes were covered in blood, and she had specifically changed before police arrived. It was becoming clear to police what really happened, and Janice was arrested. She ended up confessing. It must be noted that she had the help of two other assailants. As they looked into Janice's past, they realized she wasn't even an orphan. She was sentenced to 30 years in prison. So why did Janice do this? She had been taken in by a warm, loving family after all. 
While the parents of the two victims believed Janice wanted to be their only child. She had done this out of jealousy. She wanted to be the only one who got their love and affection. My name's Harves and I talk about true crime cases. If you want to hear more content like this, I suggest you follow.